while I never thought I'd say it, the rings of power just got worse. The Messiah has returned. Oh boy, it's a bad episode. A really, really, really bad episode. We have Galadriel, who's just so insufferable. Alron's in charge, and Galadriel isn't happy about it. Her attitude and the acting stinks so they've got to find a load of alvin warriors to join their merry gang so they are wandering the lands trying to get to calabrimbor to warn him about sauron even though she should have told him straight away that halbrand is sauron and they stumble across a broken bridge and we get the first look of the mighty morphine power rangers just the alves in this show lack the presence where's their authority where's their beauty look at these lot they just look so weak and speaking of weak people Gladwell still thinks she's the boss and every time Alron gives orders she has to contradict him and she's always in the right by the way she's never wrong Gladwell says they should go north Alron says they need to go south she keeps quizzing him she keeps disobeying him she doesn't like to take orders and then she has a vision of a Barrow White the group of elves talk about the history of the Barrow Whites so they know of their existence and they know regionally where they're going to be. And what do they do? They decide to go into that region. Brilliant. They already know they're there. But fuck it. Let's go that way. And so Alrond, being an absolute cuck that he is, decides, you know what? We already have this information, but because I'm meant to be looking awful as a leader, we're going to go the wrong way. And boy, They go the wrong way. So the Power Rangers go south, much like the show. And guess what? It's the wrong decision. They are now in the Barrow Downs. So they've already no knowledge of this place, but they thought, fuck it, we'll go through it. And guess what? The Barrow Whites are there. And we find this out because random alpha we don't know whose name is never given so we can't feel anything towards the character gets a random chain chucked at him and he gets dragged away into one of the holes gladual does her best actually no she tries to save him and then gives up and then he dies and all the other elves are just standing around they're not helping at all and nameless character dies and so they start attacking the barrowites who shouldn't be around at this time they're about a thousand years before they should be existing but fuck it it's amazon prime so they'll do what they want and they notice that their attacks don't work by the way the chain that took the other elf came about so quickly but the chains now are so slow the barrowites are so slow now they're just letting them talk they're letting them wander alron goes into one of the holes and finds an old sword as gladual is getting attacked which you know she isn't gonna die they make it suspenseful they're like oh is she gonna die is she gonna get hurt no she isn't and alron just saves her straight away there's no big battle and then they all grab swords and they all start killing the barrowites we have a nice beautiful montage of them going to town and that's it the scene's over thanks to alrond we have one dead elf and will that get brought up no it won't so the nameless elf is buried no lamentation you know the death of elves is massive it is a very tragic event but no He's just buried. No words are said over him. Gladwell is still berating Alron, saying that her decision is the right decision and that he should listen to her. She's just so insufferable. She says the thought of Sauron ruling the world terrifies her. Yeah? Then why didn't you tell anyone when you knew Halbrand was Sauron? Ooh, the thought is so terrifying. And so Alrond is just a weak leader. Everyone can just say anything to him and he's just there. Doesn't bark back. He's got no spine. Gladwell's just undermining him every time. And I mean it, every time they're on screen, he can't do anything anything right so as she's berating him saying that he should listen to her she has a vision of the fall of a region and she has a vision of halbrand her lover they're really going hard for this this season galbrand's on the go and after all that they agree that killing sauron should come first and then they hear drums in the distance our merry men go out and investigate the drums in the distance and they find adar's orcs and they're heading to a region the orcs somehow have managed to wander 
all the way to the borders of a region without being detected when it is already established that the elves of a region have spies. How have they not seen an army of orcs coming their way? I do not know. They better be prepared in the next episode. They must have marched in an open plain at some point. But yeah, fuck it. They've managed to go undetected and it's up to the band of merry men to stop them. So the orcs just start to fire arrows at some stray horses and an arrow hits one of the elves, another unnamed elf. And boy, he's about to die. But wait for it, the messiah returns. Oh fuck. Galadriel puts her hand on the elf, the hand with her ring on it, and it heals him. The arrow dissolves and he is saved. Oh my god, you do realise now that anyone who gets injured near Galadriel should never die again. You have just given her a pass on any injury, on any near-death experience, even for other people around her. What the actual fuck? Here we go. What can the ring do? Fuck it. It can bring people back from the dead. It can heal people from certain death. Amazing. She then tells everyone to fuck off because she's going to handle the orcs and then we get one of the worst fight scenes I have ever seen on TV. Galadriel takes on a whole horde of orcs. She goes full Matrix style. She starts throwing daggers, shooting arrows, slicing. You have orc archers in the background. Instead of firing arrows, they start to walk towards Galadriel and they try to grab her. What the actual fuck? You have all of these orcs, they don't all surround her and try to attack her at once. They are all going one by one. She's killing all of them. Oh god, we're getting more lines from the original. She then goes and shouts, I am not kidding you, go back to the shadow. Fucking hell. And then Adar captures her and that's the end of their storyline. But before that, we have one of the most awkward end credits. After she's just been captured, we have Tom Bombadil singing a proper merry song, despite the episode ending on a somber note. Fuck it, let's go in song and dance. Speaking of Tom Bombadil, we are with Gandalf the Stranger, and he's trying to find Nori and Poppy. As he's trying to find Nori and Poppy in the middle of fucking Run, he randomly stumbles across Tom Bombadil. As he's stumbling, he doesn't notice Tom until he bumps into him, despite it being in broad daylight with clear vision. And so we are introduced to Tom Bombadil. Sombre Tom. Can't be arsed, Tom. He's meant to be very merry, dancing and singing. You'll get none of that in Amazon. You'll get the singing, but it can't be arsed singing. He's got no charisma, no charm. He just looks like he's coming out of depression. The storyline of Tom Bombadil being Gandalf's mentor. Oh boy, and we get more callbacks to the books. Do you remember Old Man Willow? Well, we've got that scene rehashed. As they are talking, Gandalf goes and tries to break a branch off the tree. And guess what? Gandalf gets trapped when the tree starts to attack him. And so he gets consumed by the tree. And guess what? Tom Bombadil goes and saves him by singing his song and saying the words from the books. Just ripping stuff from the books nowadays. Why not? So then Gandalf goes and has a bath. Tom Bombadil looking at his dick for some reason. You see him glancing into the water. And Goldberry's name gets mentioned. One of the only females in Tolkien's work. And we don't see her. Wow. And we find out that Tom is the eldest. He's one of the oldest beings alive. He was alive before the creation of the world. And he's going to be teaching Gandalf. Bearing in mind at this point, we started the episode with Gandalf wanting to find the Harfoots. Now he's just completely forgotten about them. And the Dark Wizard is confirmed as an Istari. Oh dear. Now this dark wizard was mentored by Tom Bombadil and he even says 
that he's seeking to join up with Sauron. Boy, I wonder who the Dark Wizard is. I can't believe they're doing the Saruman goes evil straight away. He's not even meant to be here until the Third Age. And so Gandalf is given his task to stop Sauron and to fight the fire. Hmm, you still think the stranger's one of the blue wizards? Somehow, Nori and Poppy didn't die, and they are in the middle of Rune, and the master trackers have found them. And so they throw themselves off the cliff, which looked very similar to when Frodo, Sam, Mary and Pippin are falling, and then they are discovered by what the fuck is that? Rufio's here, out of nowhere, we have a new breed of halflings. Meet the stores. And Poppy's in love already. Just look at the design of that. You want me to take the show seriously? How many millions was spent on this show? And you give us costumes and designs like this. Shame on you. They have a chit chat. They are located nearby. He won't take them there. So they bully him and then he gives in to take them to the village. The trackers have disappeared at this point. They've stopped following despite them screaming as they're falling. And we meet the borrowers and we have some stuff to unpack so they are introduced to the villagers the lead villager is not happy that they have been brought in instead of poppy and nori being grateful and trying to woo themselves into the village they decide to be rude and talk back to them and they tell them about the stranger being a wizard and the stores mistake him and the stores mistake him for being the dark wizard yes that's his name and they lock him up without no resistance despite them threatening one of the stores if they didn't show him where they lived they just get arrested but you don't have to wait for long for that story to get concluded poppy nori and rufio are all locked up together and they are all going to be kicked out but that doesn't last long as nori brings up sardok do you remember him well if you don't it's lenny henry and apparently the main leader of the stores knows him and nori and poppy are free and we get a prophecy that i never thought we would be getting they start talking about how one hobbit is meant to bring all of the other tribes of hobbits together in one place to live in holes under the ground we get a backstory on why the hobbit holes exist who the hell is asking for this and so it's going to be nori and poppy who are going to be founding the origins of the shire brilliant but their talk is interrupted as the trackers have found them again they keep doing this they keep finding the hobbits and then going back to tell the dark wizard that they found the hobbits why and they have entered the village instead of hiding indoors or or fleeing the area they are out in the open hiding around a rock absolutely brilliant and so Minnie Mouse the leader confronts them and they slap her which pretty much should knock her out but she's okay she gets up they demand that they should give them the Harfoots because somehow the dark wizard is obsessed with them Minnie Mouse says no they aren't here now instead of raiding the place because they are shown as being brutal and they even threaten them what do they do they listen to Minnie mouse and they go they don't raid the place they don't attack they just leave and say they will be back with more force what the hell they could easily kill all of those stores why the hell don't they do it i guess because plot holes that's why do you want some more law breaking Everyone in the village is looking for Theo. Arundir is leading the search and says Theo has survived far worse. Yep, I mean, nothing tops Mount Doom. And as they are searching, Arundir finds half a body. Ooh. And he tells this information back to the villagers. And they want blood. And they want to attack the wildmen. Isildur says the great line, every minute wasted is another Theo out there. 
What the heck is that meant to mean? And so they go to explore the north part of the woods. Isildur's leg is healed somehow, and we get more bonding time between Estrid, I think her name is, and Isildur. She's flirting, despite being betrothed, and Arendir interrupts. He's seen her brand on her neck, and instead of admitting to this, she has the perfect opportunity to do this. What does she do? She throws a pot at Arendir, and we find out she's a wild man, and she's put in chains. And so they go on the road, wandering. I don't know where, but they're walking. Arendir finds some petals on the floor and concludes that Theo was taken by the Ents. And, uh, I never thought I would say this. Theo is up in a tree prison. The Ents now have prisons. Oh my god. The wise men are on the move. A sealed door falls into some viscous mud. Arendir tries to help him and they both get sucked down into the mud. Now, Estrid has a choice. Does she leave or does she help? And she helps. But as she grabs a branch and tries to save them, a big witcher-style monster just randomly springs out of the ground, but it dies straight away. Arendir stabs it, and that's it. All is done. And all is now forgiven. Arendir gives Isildur the choice to free her, and so he apologises to her, and is about to free her when she pulls out Isildur's sword and threatens him, saying the villagers would never forgive her, and they will cast her out. I mean, this is one way to win over the crowd. If you were so concerned, why didn't you run away? The choice was there. You would have been free. No chains. You could have gone back to the wildmen and you would have been okay. You could have told them about the plans and all would have been fine. But no, you saved them and now you try to threaten them. So Isildur tries to convince her. Arendir has a bow and arrow pointed at her. And then we get the Entwives. They turn up. She's angry. And she slaps, no joke, Estrid through the air. And she hits into a rock. Keep this in mind. Isildur goes to her and in a poor way tries to protect her. He looks so weak. And as the Entwife is about to step on them, Arundir tells it to stop. Stop. The Entwife stops and asks if he's killed anything. He admits to it and she has a full meltdown. Literally, she has a temper tantrum and all the Ents wake up. So Arendir's trying to calm the situation down. The Ents talk about how they aren't happy because an army of orcs have been falling trees. Hmm, I wonder where they've got that from. The Ent Wife is still pissed off. Arendir asks for forgiveness and she lets him go. All is forgiven straight away. No tension, all is done. And she lets Theo out on bail. And we cut to Estrid. Despite hitting herself on a rock, she's fine. No broken bones, she's all good. And the other wild men who were in prison with Theo get released as well. And we see one of them run up to Estrid. I'm guessing it's her betrothed and a sealed door wanders off. He's cock hurt. Theo and Arondir are now friends. That story went for. Arondir is going to fight Adar. This episode had everything. Barrow Whites, Ents, Ent Prisons, Galadriel being the Messiah, Alrond being a cook. It had the lot. Storylines where there should be tension dies away after one scene. The writing is awful. No elf or man or anyone should die near Gladwell because she has the power to heal. Tom Bombadil is a mentor now and has trained the Dark Wizard who is Saruman. This show is awful. 